Hey, listen to Competitor Cool Coat Podcast, episode 145. I'm Brandon, I'm here with Ryan, and today we're going to kick off a brand new arc by talking about a ribbon-covered brain-looking thing. Now hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan, we're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What's going down? Whole ton is going down. We're back following the arc of Remember When It Was Good. We're going to kick off a new arc that we haven't named yet nor talked about a name for, so that's always fun. But before we do any of that, we've got to thank our official sponsor, FaceToFaceGames.com. They're Canada's biggest magic store. Big shout out to FaceToFace Games. I think you said ribbon-covered brain-looking thing. Yeah. And you don't have your glasses on. No, as per the pre-show, no, I am as blind as I was when we started the show. Yeah, very maybe more so now because you're older. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as per the now free to everyone pre-show, yeah, we uh, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. We are talking about Teriel Reckoner of Souls. Give her a read. Talk about her. Then we'll talk about everything else. Teriel Reckoner of Souls is a four seven for Mardu and four. She's a flying vigilance angel, and she has tap. Choose a creature card at random from an opponent's graveyard. Put that card into play under your control. And she looks like kind of a brain with a bunch of red ribbons floating off of her. And then there's some black stuff and some clouds. Mm-hmm. Yes, if I was squinting and hammered, that's what she would look like. And then when I got really close up and I did the big zoom in thing, she looks kind of like she is from the Legion of Doom. Remember that? Yeah? Some 80s wrestling? You know, we, we like that. Yeah. The big I, red was, shoulder pads and shit? Was it 80s or was it the 90s? Both. Oh. Yeah, man. They revolutionized tag team wrestling and wrestling in general. They were actual, like, super tough badass guys who were, like, super giant and jacked and strong. And if you tried to, like, get them to like, lose to you in wrestling they didn't want to, they would legit beat you up in the ring and pin you. Oh. Yep. They were... They are some interesting dudes from back in the in old school 80s days. All super interesting, but we are not combat sports cookout podcast. Oh, CCO. <laughs> we, we are Commander Cookout Podcast, and I had mentioned just a moment ago that the pre-show, the CCO pre-show as it, as it is aptly named, now free to everybody on YouTube. We released episode 143 and 44 yep. as kind of like just a... A preview of the pre-show and it was received well and we got some messages and shares and tweets saying that people liked it so we decided to open it up to everybody and we wanted to let everybody know that it, it is still brought to you all by our generous patrons patreon.com slash cco podcast where you can go new pledges for the arc of do we have a name we haven't even sort of thought of a name i like i thought of it the other day when I was doing some research, Commander Rejects. The Ark of the Reject? Yeah, both are working titles. We'll go with one of them. We'll say one, two, both. They're interchangeable. Yeah, and everybody knows how that works. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Working titles just end up being the title. Yeah. Commander Reject Ark sign-up gift. It's October. You know what that means? Stupid Halloween token altars. We're talking pumpkins, ghosts. Yes, candy corns. I think I'm the only person who likes those. You and David Curtin here at the here at Rolco Radio oh, yeah. Palace. He also likes candy corns. They're when they're super fresh, like now, not in November. <laughs> <laughs> he likes candy corns and those little. I forget the name of those, like taffy candies that come in the orange, white, oh, and black wrapper. No. Yeah. Right. One day or one year, he actually brought in like the brand name because there is a brand name of those. There's like the no name one that we're all thinking about, and then like the real one. And I ate one, and it stuck my teeth together. Yeah, and you know what? When they, like, after Halloween when they're hard, and you know how the edges kind of get, like, sharp because the way that they were wrapped when they were soft? And you use them to break into a bank vault? Well, I was going to say they cut your gums when that sharp piece, like, stabs into your gums. Mine never made it to that long. I always just threw them in the garbage. Yeah, I shot them out of a potato gun across the river. Yeah. Anyways, sign-up gifts. Sign-up c- gifts. Could include... Any of those things painted onto magic cards by your boy. There could be a spirit token with a sheet over its head, so it's dressed up as a ghost. That would be funny. Oh, that's excellent. (laughs) 
and of course, newly minted CCO sticks. You saw them all over Twitter, Facebook, and the pre-show this week. Yeah, you're going to see them all over your friend's deck box as well. So check out commandercookout.com slash store. You can order some for yourself or sign up to be a patron and we'll send you one. Next bit of merch. As of this time, you're listening to this, shirts are available. But the very simplistic, primitive, and free <laughs> <laughs> uh, PayPal bot that we're using actually doesn't give us all the options we need for different prices and sizes and colors and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to put a link on the store page for t-shirts. You send us an email through the link. You tell us how many shirts you want, how many sizes you want. And what color you want. That's right. And we'll send you an invoice for said amount of shirts, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And shirts are fun. I'm yep. wearing one right now. Final thing before we move into some actual shout outs. Big thank you to the general... CCO Nation for helping us out with the stickers so far. We've sold a bunch. That's true. And we've had lots of interest in them, actually. That makes me feel real good. Yeah, we've actually even had the Spike Feeders, another set set of content creators. <laughs> <laughs> They're based out of Winnipeg, so like boo on that. But yeah, they did a little Twitter contest giveaway, and we sent a bunch of stickers to them for them to give away. And One thing about the Spike Feeders, I think I met them in Vegas, and they had me on one of their videos. We were talking about favorite commanders, and I said my favorite commander was Lightning Bolt, and they kept it in. Was that the Spike Feeders? I think so. Could have been. I think it was them. I got ah. some. I got some of their dice in in Vegas. Neat. Like little with the little cactus on it. Yeah, they have a, they have a super cool. It's not as cool as our logo, but it's a really cool logo. <laughs> yeah, we are elitists and we are one uppers and nobody's as good as us. That's right. <laughs> New patron shout outs. Ooh. It's actually more of a a pledge increase. But I wanted to give him a shout out because he wrote us a message and he used a different nickname. What the hell's wrong with you? Get this. You know, you know, we've had some some classic nicknames like the Pope of Podcast and the Deech, the Dooch. Oh, yeah. Matza Burger. Those were all good. Yes. So Cohen Mommerstieg, we nicknamed him Mommy. <laughs> yeah. He messages me and he signs it at the bottom of the message. The Steeg. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So shout out to the Steeg. Thank you for upping your pledge. That really does help us out a lot. It means a lot to us. So thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate the support. So we're going to try something new this this arc. It's the first time we've ever done this. Ooh, what are we doing? 145 episodes and we've never done this. Ooh. Sort of. It's a historical moment. We're all part of a history-making thing? Sure, moment. yeah. Attraction? Whatever. We've got our Commander Rejects arc topic picked yes this is what that means we're gonna go through the history of all the commander precon decks and pick all the ones that have the least amount of builds the ones that got the least love that we've never built before yeah because we built some of them because that's what we do that's right we right? built we build jank for those of you that forgot we build jank here so this is who we picked i know that there are a couple that have less builds but again we've already done them or We've, we've already, already done, done them. And so have you, and you'll know what that means in a second. So this is what we've got. Tariel, Reckoner of Souls, that's today. Yep. Jazal, Goldmane. Oh. Yeah, it's like the white attacky card. Yep. Right? Because that's original. Yep. Timna the Weaver, but just Ooh. Timna. Huh. Yeah. That's surprising the hell out of me. She doesn't, she's got like the least amount of solo builds out of any of the 2016 commandies. Huh. Yeah. Weird, hey? Yeah, that, that is a little strange. Yes, I did not see that coming. Tygom Sidisi's hand. We, collective we, didn't even know what that card did. I forgot he even existed, yeah. Turns out we looked him up. He's a 3-4 for 5 that, like, has removal attached to him. Fine. But he lets you surveil 3 every turn. Well, you... you I, I don't know if it's surveil. Is it surveil? Because you just get to keep one. You draw 3, yeah. keep 1, bin it's, 2. So it's it says draw 3, of. yeah. So I looked him up, and his text box starts with, skip your draw step. And I'm like, my ears perk up, and I'm like, ooh, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah, Tygom Sidisi's hand. The final one, we're not sure yet. Shattergang Brothers or Wasatora Nekoru Queen? Yeah, they kind of are the same-ish deck, probably. Jund make you sacrifice stuff dot deck. Yeah, so we'll take a look at that. This is what we want. This is the call out to the nation. Anybody in our Discord that has access to the preferred deck list channel, go there, submit your decks for Tariel, Shattergang, Wasatora, Jazal, Timna, and Tygam. We'll check them out, 
we might actually use them. We want input on these decks to use your decks. Yeah, maybe you're one of the like 17 people that built Giz what's his name? Jazal. Jazal. Maybe you're one of those like 17 people. You and know what it you... could be? Could be like he's a Johnny's brother theme deck. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have. Oh, it's not even built around dudes attacking. It's a Johnny tribal. Yeah, because he's like he he super likes and looks up to his brother. <laughs> he's like my brother's the best. And then it's just like a it's a Voltron deck, and yeah, people are fine. people are saving their wraths and just getting beat to death by like an eight eight guy with a bunch of equipment on him because they're waiting for you to play a bunch of creatures. That's it. <laughs> That's it. If you're not a patron, we still would like to receive your deck list, but there is a rider. We need them to be entered into a deck building database. So no, just like list in an, in the body of the email we need a link to an actual deck that we can like sort and have some stats and budget and stuff on so we can do like a proper deck tech yes we appreciate that very much we appreciate when you take the time to type out your whole deck but wow man like they're really hard to use because then we have to populate the list and yeah i mean it's fine but you know what the other thing is too is when you send it to us then we can credit you in the show notes and then people people will go and look at your list yeah which is cool it's, it's cool to have people come and look at your stuff that you made. And uh -huh. if you want to send us those lists, you can send them to us at uh, CCO Podcast or CCO Brando on Twitter or tappedout.net. You can send them to us at commandercookout at gmail.com. Direct message us on Facebook. Leave a link in a YouTube comment. And if you want a list of other places you can send those off to, you can check us out on our official, official home on the entire internet, commandercookout.com. Uh, Where we are a little bit focusing some attention to bolster your experience when you go there. Yes, we're trying to update the website a little bit more, increase the visitor experience, as it were. Ooh, the Ooh. visitor experience. The Disneyland of Commander websites. Yes. It's definitely not that. <laughs> but <laughs> Maybe yeah, someday. whatever. Maybe someday. Should we do a deck? I guess. Listen, this is like old school, grassroots, traditional, jank ass commandy. We already talked about Teriel. Yes. And how she's hawk and or animal. Maybe draws or puke. Puke. From the Legion of Doom. How many Legion of Dooms were there? There was just three. There was Hawk and Animal. And then when real life Hawk had some personal problems, let's just say, they tried to replace him with Darren Drozdoff, who they called Puke. Oh. Yeah, because he, he played in the NFL and he could puke on command. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it's pretty gross. And then he uh, has his, his neck broken. He's, in a, he's a wheelchair guy now. Also bad. Yeah, it's bad news. Good on you, D'Lo Brown. You fucking idiot. Hey, D'Lo Brown is the reason that I don't have an appendix. And he's the reason that Darren Drodzoff can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. All right, let's 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 do a deck tech. Now, for those of you who are new to the show, we go through the decks by type and sort of alphabetical. Sometimes we switch it up. Today, we're not going to. We're going to start with creatures. We're going to go alphabetically, and we're going to start with anger. 2-2 two -two for 4 haste. So, you know, you can get your beats in on turn 4 with your 2-2. Two -two. But if he's in your graveyard and you have a mountain... All your Creech have haste. That is effing good. Yeah, wait until you see what we're going to do with some of those Creech. How about Apostle of Purifying Light? This is one that is not in Tariel decks, and it should be. Get this. 2-1 for 2. So again, get your beats in. <laughs> <laughs> Protection from black. So beat up them Timna players <laughs> who don't build Timna. <laughs> Pay 2. Exile target card from a graveyard. And Why would we want to do that, Ryan? You'll remember that Tariel's tap ability is... Get a creature at random from target player's graveyard. Yeah. They got two Creech. One's good, one's bad. Pay two, exile the bad one, tap Terriel, get the good one. It's very good. What's yeah. that a picture of? It's like a it's a bubble with a tree in it that's on fire? That is an apostle, a human cleric, that is, standing in a bubble of light where she or he, they, cannot be hurt by all of those black demon-looking things. I don't see it. Let's yeah. move on to the next card. The next card is a real piece of shit, and here's why I say that. It's Butt Gift Demon. <laughs> <laughs> Got there. That's it. Is it 5-4 Flyer for 5? At the beginning of your upkeep, target player draws a card and loses a life. You ever kill somebody when they're at one? Yes. Neat. <laughs> you can do that. I don't know what Durgar Hedge Mage. You've never played this guy before. Yeah, no, I I purposely went through and found some cards in Mardu that I've never played that I've heard are good or just are outside of my wheeled house, so I could kind of make the deck feel a little bit different to me. So he is a two-two for Boros and two. When he enters the battlefield, 
if you control two or more mountains, you destroy target artifact. When he enters the battlefield, if you control two or more planes, you destroy target enchantment. So three mana, two, two, that could potentially destroy an artifact and an enchantment on ETB. It's pretty good. And if you can reanimate him, your reanimate spells or your Tariel can actually act as like removal spells. Well, Tariel can't get this guy because she only targets opponents. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. we may or may not have some reanimation yeah. in our. I'm sure for we, our own stuff. I'm sure we have a way of bringing him back. We might even be able to bring him back with Felden of the Third Path. Yeah, three mana tap, create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, and then it's an artifact. It gains haste. You sack it at end of turn. Important to note, he doesn't exile the card. So every turn you can bring back your Hedge Mage or your Fiend Hunter is the next yeah. one. It's another removal spell attached to a creature that you can reanimate. He's an O ring. Yeah. We also have a Grand Abolisher. He's a 2-2 two, two for 2. During your turn, your opponent can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. It's a good card. They can still do land abilities, and that does count for more than just tapping them for mana. Yeah, they sometimes can, you can get Maze of Ith, you could get Wastelanded, you could yeah. get all kinds of shit happened. I guess they could use, um, what's the thing, Cabal Coffers if they really wanted to. Yeah. That's they couldn't just, do anything a, with the mana. but Unless they, they were make. activating another ability of a land. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> They're playing Jund, and they're using their Cabal Coffers to activate their uh, Kessig Wolf run to make their blocker real big. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yes, that's what they're doing. <laughs> Grand Abolish is a terrible terrible card. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Next up, we have Intrepid Hero. Yeah, speaking of terrible cards, this is a 1-1 one, one for 3. You can tap it to destroy target Creech with power 4 or greater. Sounds like we could kill their Creech and then steal it out of their graveyard. Meh, 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 meh. All right, next creature. I can't. I think this is a Volcano erupting into the sky and there's like a little guy looking at it so that doesn't make any sense that it's a karmic guide more or less it's an angel <laughs> it's a 2-2 for 5 so you know it's got to be good flying pro black echo people forget it has echo which is yeah. at the beginning of the next upkeep you have to pay its echo cost which, which is usually its casting cost yeah so you got to pay for it again or else it dies it's a 2-2 flying pro black for 10. Yeah, but what does it do? It reanimates a creature right to the battlefield. Now, important to note, it is only from your graveyard. Yes. So it, it's not the greatest with Tariel, but we, uh, we, we're, we're going to play it. Just like we play Knight of the White Orchid. Yeah, that's a little bit of ramp. I don't know. I That card's fallen out of favor for me, but I put it in because it's like, it's still good, and it's a knight, which is sort of relevant right exactly now. It's a 2-2 two, two first strike for two. When it enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you can search your library for a planes, put it onto the battlefield. Not a basic planes. Yeah, That's so you can, yeah, you can get your dual lands or your cycle lands or your... Well, you can't get cycle lands in this deck, but you can get uh, you can get your plateau. It's something good. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, Mother of Runes. Oh, baby, yeah. 1-1 one, one for one tapper. Target creature you control gains protection from a color of your choice till end of turn. Super good saves your creature's ass every day of the week. You know what I like to do with Mother of Runes? What is it? I like to give my opponent's creatures protection from prote from enchantments that are on them so the enchantments fall off. <laughs> yeah, I like to do that. There's lots of stuff you can do with Mother of Runes that I think people just kind of forget about. Yeah, they is think about saving their own creature, or they say things like, Oh, that one for Modern of Modern Horizons isn't as good because it can't give protection to itself. Well, in EDH, you don't use your Mother of Ruins to give protection to itself yeah. because you don't care about your 1-1 one -one surviving. You care about your next card that we're going to talk about surviving. Which is Rune Scar Demon. Or not surviving because you want it to die, then reanimate it and get another ETB, right? <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you don't. Anyways, it's a 6-6 six, six flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you search for any card in your library. It's a seven drop demonic tutor with a flying six six is attached to it. Yeah, not terrible. It's definitely not bad. How about Sepulchral Primordial? Yes. Five four intimidate, because we know that intimidate <laughs> is like fear when it's on a black creature. Is it? Yes. Is that what it I get them mixed up all the time. Intimidate Damn. is fear, but for the the color of the creature. So this one has fear? Yes. Nice. Also, when it enters a battlefield, for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That is a hell of a drug. Yeah, so you, I mean, this costs seven and Tariel costs seven. I'd rather have this, honestly. <laughs> but if you can do both in consecutive turns, you can just, like, get whatever you want and then get something random. 
Yeah. With Tariel. So it's not terrible. Next card. How about Shieldred, the Whispering Eye? One. That's not what I said. I know. 6-6 <laughs> six, six Swamp Walk for 7. At the beginning of your upkeep, you reanimate one of your creatures. At the beginning of a, each opponent's upkeep, that player sacks a creature, and then you take it with Sepulchral Primordial or Tariel. We call her Swamp Bitch. Why do we call her that? I have no idea, but that's just what her name is. Sounds like a Drider. I don't even... Yeah, drider? I don't know what's going on there, like... Are those her legs? I think so. She's like a... Did she a, used to have wings or something? She's like a lady, lady, lady thing. And then she's got like a weird Phyrexian spider body. These are like four big, big pokey legs. Are those the legs at the back? I assume so. I think we're, I think we're taking this way. What's the next card? The next card is Solemn Simulacrum. We all know what that does. Yeah. Now, why are we playing Stoneforge Mystic? Um, because... We haven't we... got to the equipment yet. Is there an equipment suite we should know about? There used to be. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> to cut it. Um, Stoneforge Mystic is a cut because there's no equipment that I want to find with it. I forgot to cut it. My okay, bad. So we'll cut it and we can play from... Da, 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 da. Ooh, how about this? How about Clack Bridge Troll from the new set? From Ooh, Eldrain. a Clack Bridge. I got an extended art one in my super pack. It's a... What is it? A Black Black 3 for an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yes. When it comes into play, one of your opponent gets three zero one goats. Yep. And then during combat on your turn, any player may sack a dude that taps the Clackbridge Troll and draws you a card. So that is card draw in white because we're playing white, <laughs> even though Clackbridge Troll is black. <laughs> so you can play the troll, you can feed your Tariel by getting your opponent's dudes into the bin, and you can feed yourself by drawing a card. Yes, and then eating it. Yes. Next you card. Why not? <laughs> How about Sun Titan? We all know what that does. When it ETBs or attacks, you get a three drop or smaller from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Let's talk some instants. Sure. Let's 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 kind of go through these a little bit fast because there's some interesting ones and then there's just some common removal ones. Boros Charm. We our stuff gets double strike or indestructible. Chaos Warp. That just removes something. Comeuppance. Comeuppance is I don't think we've ever played this card before. I think somebody I think somebody played it at EDH and M last time I was there. Really? I think so. You know what? I think this was a listener submitted deck from like Arc Audience or something. This this card was in it. Anyways, it's an instant for white three. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to you and planeswalkers you control this turn by sources that you don't control. Holy Jesus, there's lots of cards words on here. It takes all the damage that's being dealt to you and your stuff and reverses it onto whoever's doing the damage. That's what it does. Or whatever creature is dealing the damage. Yeah, like if the creature hits you, the creature takes the damage instead. If I'm burning you with like a lightning bolt or a whatever, I get bolted instead. And you can say, oh, geez, what a comeuppance. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Matt O. Yeah, sure. I think I've... Matt O did that. And sure. Like, it was at a weird time and it just messed some dude up. We have Crackling Doom. That's a creature sacrificer for your opponents, right? With gets, the greatest power. It gets the biggest dude of all your opponents and twos them. Yep. D-Spark. D-Spark exiles target permanent with converted mana cost four or greater. Now, do we want to be exiling people's We don't. Stuff? We don't, but at two mana and path to exile and swords to plowshares at one mana are just like the most efficient and best ways to do this in the game and return to dust is in here as well so it's utter, utter end. end they just they're so good and they can just get whatever we want so all of our removal removes things from the game so it's kind of a nombo with terio this is one of those things where you might want to take a take yeah, a okay. you look could, at your yeah, removal yeah for suite. sure you could put in some instead of the white one drop removal you can put the black one and two drops in that and and then just be a little bit weak to other people's black creatures because sometimes the black removal gets only non-black creatures yeah, maybe play some red removal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's what, what's the one drop that um, it's a one drop instant in black that target opponent sacrifices a or you destroy target colorless creature. Uh, I don't remember. Surprisingly relevant. If you know what card that is, t tweet at us. It's like U Ulamog's getting held by a big demon or something in the art. Neat. Yeah. I'm curious what that is. And the last instant we have is tithe. Search your library for a planes card. If you control fewer lands than opponents, search your library for an additional planes card. Reveal them, put them into your hand. It kind of just gets you land. Not basic planes, also important to note. So some sorceries. How about Ashen Powder? That's Here's another one. one we've never played. Hey, four drop. Put a target creature card from one of your opponent's graveyards into play under your control. 
Neat. I like that. And that's sixth edition art, though, hey? <laughs> <laughs> it's so kind of simplistic -y, I can even sort of tell what that is. There's a little guy with a Santa hat on, and he's dancing, and he's holding a jester by the ball sack, and he's reaching out, and there's a demon coming out of the dirt. Yes. That's what's happening in that card, right? 100%. Excellent. All right, next up we have a Stair Command. Everybody knows that one. It just You pick two things, destroy all of those things. Yep. Next up we have a Beacon of Unrest. That reanimates something, and then you shuffle it into your library. Not the something, but the card, the Beacon <laughs> of Unrest. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bond of Revival. Hey, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn for five mana. And it doesn't get sacked. No, it that's, just gets haste. That's really good. Uh, Buried Alive. That gets us something into our graveyard. Cataclysm. That kills everything. Catastrophe. That also kills everything. Day of Judgment. Kills everything. Preator's Grasp. Ooh, this is one that I was like, uh, it's fine, but it kind of goes with the theme of the deck. Search your opponent's library for a card. Exile it. As long as you, it's exiled face down, you can cast it and you can spend mana as the, or mana of any color? No, you can just play it as long as it's... You exile it face down and then you can play it as long as it remains exiled. Okay, so i got to tap the appropriate color. Yeah. But we're in three colors. That's pr probably good enough. And if there's only a green or like blue player left, just get an artifact. Yeah, I like that. Reanimate. Gets a reanim reanimates a creature. Rise from the grave. Reanimates a creature, makes it a zombie. Rise of the Dark Realms. Reanimates all the creatures. Vandal Blast. Th that card is expensive, FYI. I know. I almost didn't run it because it's like 28 bucks. It's crazy. Yeah. Not Vandal Blast. Vandal Blast destroys all artifacts. Vindicate. That destroys target permanent. There you go. There we go. Wrath of God. That destroys all creatures. No Torment of Souls. Or Torrent of Souls. Torrent of Souls? Torrent of Souls. I thought that this would be a really good one for, for this deck. It's kind of on theme. Torrent of Souls is a sorcery for Rakdos and four. Return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to play if you spent black to cast it, and if you spent red to cast it, creatures target player controls get plus two plus only in haste until end of turn. So you reanimate a dude and give your team bigger and haste for five. Yeah, that's good. And it's got a cool art on it, and it says of souls. Oh, is... you know what I like too now that I'm thinking about it? Cauldron Dance. Give that one a read. Cauldron Dance. You can cast it only during combat. Red, black, four. <laughs> yeah. Return target creature card from your graveyard to play. That creature gains haste. Return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. That creature gains haste. Its controller sacrifices it at the beginning of the next end step. So you get a thing from your bin into play, a thing from your hand into play. The thing that went into play from your bin comes back to your hand. The thing that came into play from your hand goes into the bin. Yeah, that's a good dance. That is a good dance. So those those are some suggestions. Maybe we can gloss over the suggestion section when we get there. Infernal Reckoning was the card that I was talking about. It's an instant for black. Exile target... Oh, it's still exile. Exile target colorless creature. You gain life equal to its power. Neat. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Should, should we do some enchants? Enchants. We have animate dead. That animates a dead guy. When you get like the alpha or beta ones, animate dead creature. I like that. Or like enchant dead creature, sorry. Enchant dead creature. I super like that. Oh, fanatical devotion. Fanatical devotion. Look at this one from Prophecy. Enchantment. White. Two. Brando's giving me the look. Sack a creature. Regenerate target creature. Why do you want to sack your dudes? You'll see. Oh, hey. We don't want to cut stone forge. We do have an equipment. I forgot. We'll get there. Oh, Listen, sacrificing a creature to save another target creature... It's not bad. ...is actually good. Like, in, in, with Fanatical Devotion, you can sacrifice some crappy dude to put, like, a regeneration shield on whatever, then cast a Day of Judgment, and your guy will regenerate. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Ghostly Prison. That's a little bit loose, but I just don't want to get attacked. Goblin Bombardment. There's another sacrifice outlet. Hmm. Grave Betrayal. Whenever a creature dies, instead of it dying, you get it, and you get it with a plus one, plus one counter. And it's a zombie and black, in addition to its other colors and types. Yeah, it's don't care. Not relevant. Probably. Yeah, we're just going to reanimate everything out of your graveyard whenever it dies. Necromancy. That's a reanimate spell that you could cast with flash, but it only reanimates till end of turn. So if you need to like flash in a big blocker. Flashing your rune scar demon and then just get like your actual removal spell. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Phyrexian Arena. Draw a card, lose a life during your upkeep. 
that is just going to get you uh, get you extra cards. All right, for our artifact suite, we start off with Boros Signet, Chromatic Lantern, Commander Sphere, Fel Warzone, Stall Ring, Orzov Signet, Rakdo Signet, Talisman of Indulgence. Those are our rocks. Those are our rocks. So we've I think there's seven of them in the list, which is a little bit light on ramp, but you know what? Reanimation spells are cheap, and you don't have to be the one that's killing and removing all the creatures. You can let other people do that, and then you can just one and two mana your way to having a board state. And if you're playing in like a more casual meta, you don't really need to ramp that hard, even though your commander costs seven. Yeah. yeah just... And you know what? Your commander costing seven with self-reanimation spells in your own deck, you could just like graveyard it yeah, and reanimate it so you don't have to pay nine. That's fine. It's fine. We also have an Altar of Dementia, another sack outlet. Ooh, target player puts a number of cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard, so you can sack a creature to mill. And thus, load up Tariel for a possible uh, big steal. Yeah, you know what? The only thing I would recommend is you have some way to generate a random number if your opponent has like 25 creatures in their <laughs> graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> or, I don't know, unless you're one of those people that like is super sticklery about the order of graveyards... I would think you could just take the creatures, put them in a pile, mix them up, and then just pick one. Yeah, that that it would be a very uh, a, a fine way to do it. I think it. that would be a fun way of doing yeah. it. And you know what? Graveyard order doesn't matter unless you would have cards that say it does. Yeah, like there has to be two black creatures on top of that. I forget what that one is. Yeah, but. well, there's actually a reanimation spell I was thinking about putting in here that says top creature of a graveyard. I'm glad you didn't play that. It's a good card. It's a fine card. Shallow Grave. It's whatever. That's another suggestion. There yeah, you go. Sure. Next card. We're also playing Greaves. We all know Greaves. And you have a Thornbite Staff. So this is why we sacrifice stuff. So Equip Creature has two. Tap. This creature deals one damage to target creature or player. And whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, untap that creature. So you attach that to Tariel and you tap her to get a creature. Then you sack the creature to either mill somebody or goblin bombardment ping them. You could also put Ashnod's altar in here to make two mana. And then Tariel untaps. You can tap her again to get the creature out of the graveyard. You can sacrifice it to do your thing and she untaps. So you could theoretically go infinite with Thornbite staff. And it's a little bit unexpected because your Mardu reanimation angel demon deck shouldn't just win with an infinite combo. But I'm telling you, you're going to need to do that sometimes because I don't know if this deck is winning any land speed races. I think you could probably cut the the Stoneforge and leave that in there. You know what? Considering that it's $75, yeah. I would cut it. And that does give us one less tutor for the spice calculator. And it does make it feel a little bit more random. It does make the deck feel a little bit more fair. Like and if you're going to play infinite combos... The, the the fastest way to tilt your friends in, during a casual game is like, don't worry, the deck's just for fun, and play seven tutors in your deck. Yeah, that's right. Like, And you know what? It does make Runescar Demon feel a lot more like a powerful demon when you can actually like search him up, then get him into your graveyard, then reanimate him, then somebody's going to kill him, you reanimate him again. It makes it feel like he's a high-stakes kind of card for the deck. Yeah, and if people can dispatch him effectively, like with a path to exile or something, that's that's, he, that's bad. But it makes it feel like more of, of the card that it is. And he's something you can play to your table too. Like you don't have to necessarily find your win condition to win the game, unless that's what you're doing or what you need to do at that point, because you want to go on to game two. Whereas Stoneforge Mystic is, I'm going to find my infinite combo now. Yeah, here it is. I win. Okay, Clackbridge Troll, it is. Yeah. But get this: this is the last artifact. Thousand Year Elixir. You can activate abilities of Creech you control as though they had haste. So this lets you cast Tariel and immediately activate her. You can also tap one and it to untap a creature. So you could Tariel two things. That's neat. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's a cool sure. card. And, you know, with something like the uh, aforementioned Ashnod's Altar, not in the deck because, like, oh, Ashnod's Altar goes infinite with everything. Goblin Bombardment or altar of dementia like you can just get a second of that activation like if you need to kill a x2 or if you need to mill somebody because they're the only person left and they got bajuka bogged they bajuka bogged themselves so then you can like <laughs> altar of dementia twice with your thousand year elixir it seems minor but 
it's uh, it's a thing, especially it's, especially with a nine drop and then an eleven drop, then a thirteen drop commander. Yeah, yeah. You want to make sure you're getting some kind of value if you're going to spend that kind of mana. Yeah, for sure. Creature. Why is she random and then costs so much in a commander product? Like you, she was printed knowing that she could be played for thirteen. Yeah, in you know the Mardu I mean? deck, it, she she was in Commander 2011. They didn't quite have their bearing and their sea legs under them for designing commanders. See Animar, see Kalia. Yeah, <laughs> whose deck she came in. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I, I guess that's why. Because you get her for free in Kalia. I guess. Right? I don't know. What? Because she's got a cool picture, <laughs> and Wizards just doesn't like giving us fancy things that have good pictures. <laughs> I don't know. Any lands of note that you want to talk about? It seems fairly standard oh, for a we, Mardu we got a, deck. We got a command beacon. See our conversation from four seconds ago. Yes, get your <laughs> get your forty seven drop commander back to your hand so you can play her for seven instead. That's it. Got a Slayer's Stronghold. That's a cool land. I think you don't see very much of it outside of Voltron lists. It gives your guy vigilance and haste. That's sort of like a a. a a finisher card, but over two turns. So, like, somebody thinks you're going to have to attack all out and then have no blocks are going to kill you on the crackback. No, you Slayer Stronghold, give all your guys Vig and plus two. You attack them once, you have all up to block, you attack them again. Like it. Two-turn finisher. <laughs> Not super powerful, but yeah, it's, whatever. It's, fun. it's a good Welcome card. Welcome to CCO Nation. <laughs> That's the deck. That's it. That's the whole thing. So that is our first Commander Reject. And you can see why she was a reject. Yeah. She costs too much, and she's at random. <laughs> yes and yes. So speaking of random, strengths and weaknesses? How about instead we do card of the, of the week? week. Switching it up on us. Switching it up on you. Sure, we can switch it up. Do whatever we want. It's our show. You're not wrong. <laughs> what do you got this week? I built it. I think I know what card I would like. Let's see if you can nail it. So you want me to guess what you picked? Sepulchral Primordial. That's a good card. That's what I would pick. Is it the best primordial? No. Is the is the red one better? It steals something and gives them haste. The green one's the best. Yeah, the one green is one's the best one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not close. The green S one is the S best one. Sepulchral prim primordial is good. The card I was gonna say is fanatical devotion, sacrifice to regenerate. You know how strong regenerate is? Regenerate's strong because people forget it exists. Yes, but this one you with mine you get everybody's best thing. Yeah, when somebody tries to kill it. Then you just regenerate it with my thing. But how are they going to kill it if you don't have it? Shut up. Mine enables yours, but it's your deck, so we can go with Fanatical Devotion. I, I got this, I got this. Okay. Fanatical Devotion is from Mercadian Masks Block. All right. You got me there, and it's a common, which is... Yeah, how often are you playing Masks Block commons in your EDH decks if you're not CCO Nation? <laughs> <laughs> just, there's a little bit of a qualifier there. All right, let's give it another read. We have Fanatical Devotion is a white enchantment for white two sacrifice a creature, regenerate target creature. Full stop. If you want to pick one up for yourself, you're looking at about 42 American cents, about a buck 15 Canadian. If you would like that sweet foil, uh, I think maybe it's just because it's old that it has a multiplier like this. It's six dollars. For a foil one, uh, American, that's about 14 Canadian. Yeah, 14,000. Yeah. You could buy a small car or like a donkey. Or a glowing cow for some beans. You good, yeah, there you go, good reference. But if you have a foil glowing cow card, I will trade it from you. Because I want to frame it. Bartered wanna, cow, right? I want to look at it every morning and say, Jack, you're an idiot. <laughs> Because the cow's glowing. It's obviously magical. Why would you sell it for beans? You should I, plant the cow and see what grows. I don't even think it's a cow in the story, is it? Is it like uh, transformed into a cow, but it's something else? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know how fairy tales work. I didn't read this story from El Drain. All I know is science. <laughs> Strengths and weaknesses? Strengths and weaknesses. These are science. Okay. Strength. Scales well with opponent's deck, sort of like clone dot deck. Yeah, we talked about clone dot deck way back in the day and other times since then. It's a deck that gets better as your opponents do better stuff. And Tariel is exactly the same way, where the more giant, fatty, dirty, rotten beaters are in your opponent's graveyard, whether you put them there or not, your deck gets better. Very much so. Just an extra step in there, I guess. Yes. <laughs> He's going to kill their thing first. Uh... Just hope your buddy's playing a mill deck. Just, hey. Traumatize this guy. Oh, traumatize that guy. Then I can like randomly get a 1-1 one -one out of his graveyard. <laughs> Commander rejects. Comes from behind, out of nowhere. Don't Google that. Yes and yes. Listen, you're behind 
Somebody wrath aboard. Somebody wrath of the board. Sepulchral primordial. Boom. You're winning. The, the deck does have a very cloak and dagger kind of thing to it because nobody's going to look at this deck and think, oh my God, this is so strong. They're going to look at it and say, I wonder what he's doing. <laughs> and then when Why you just playing that, and then you do nothing, and then you do a whole bunch of things. It's it's a cool way to play Magic, and I mean, yeah, it's the way that everybody kind of plays in casual games. But y- you can pull out some sweet shit with stuff like this. Listen, I got it. Okay. Besides the sick art on the commander, there is a definite strength and value in fun, janky, and really spicing a deck to your style. Yes, and you can totally do that here. It doesn't have to be all kill spells and reanimation. You can do all sorts of cool stuff with Mardu. And you know what? Like, even looking at card of the week this week, you like it because it's from Masks Block. I like it for a totally different reason because I super value reanimation. Sorry, regeneration. I do not. I value the cool halberd thing on the corner of the card. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) That is the nemesis set symbol. Regenerate (laughs) my fucking balls, man. I don't even care. Weaknesses, slow, probably, and probably not enough ramp. There isn't, is there enough ramp? You'd have to play like Smothering Tithe and... Ooh, that'd be good. That'd be a good one in here. Like, you you could do it, but you'd run the risk of your deck being just all ramp and then a fairly flimsy payoff because the deck, he, like, your main source of getting your opponent's dudes, it, it is random. You might run into somebody that isn't a creature deck that isn't playing the beaters that you kind of need to justify paying 13 mana for your creature because yeah, it's yeah, going to die good, a few times all good analyses and and with the ubiquity of graveyard removal in commander like you think you're going to play how many games are going to play where there's no rest in wow. peace there's no bajook bajooka bog there's no baron ashmore baron what the hell is that land that removes all the graveyard from the game scavenger ground scavenger ground like what they just wreck you consequentially, not even you specifically. And you know what else, too? And this is of the same kind of thought. What if you're playing against a deck that wants to reanimate its own things and you just don't get them because your opponent already got them for themselves? Like, what yeah. if you're playing Muldratha and they're just like, hmm, what's my best creature? I'm just going to take that one so he, so you can't get it. Yeah. Right? What's the creature that you want? I'll, I'll just I'll play that one for my turn. Yeah, or, or you're playing the deck that's like, Oh, I guess I'll just uh, buried alive or entombed for Razaketh, and I start to like my mouth starts to water, and then they're just like oh, reanimate, oh, tutor my whole deck, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, whoops, a, a real card. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it, I, I guess a weakness is what we're trying to say is it, it, it's pretty flimsy just because it's not targeted and it's mana intensive, so it's kind of slow. Yeah, and those are those are my slow and random were my weaknesses, and mm. you expanded on them perfectly. And we've already even covered some suggestions in the Clackbridge Troll and in what what was the thing? Infernal Reckoning. So we've got some suggestions there if you want to run some atypical removal. There's lots of atypical resurrection stuff in Mardu colors that you could play. Like Torrent of Souls and all those other things. There's lots of stuff that you can play. And in white. People always forget about their re- reincarnation, we call it. Like yeah. there's Karmic Guy, there's... Revelark or Reviark, depending on how you're pronouncing it, yeah. whatever. There's, there's actual resurrection. Resurrection. I got an elf. Oh, no, I got a beta one. Ooh. Ooh, it's pretty snazzy it's looking. $97 just because of the set it's from. It's probably expensive. It I probably don't even, is, I yeah. got it for like 11 bucks, I think. Wow, that's still lots. That's it. That's lots. Milk list? Everybody loves the milk list. I don't think we've done a milk list for a while, have we? So the milk list as per edhrec.com, is a list of every card from zero to some amount of mana in the color combination we're talking about. The most popular cards per converted mana cost, as it were. Today, Mardu, or red, black, white, or as the kids say... King Arthur and his friends, because it's the new knight colors. At the zero drop slot. Be good in this deck, because it's good in every deck. Mana Crypt. No, I'm not playing it. Can I tell you a quick zero drop slot story? Yeah, I love a good zero drop slot, if you know what I'm saying. (laughs) Don't Google that. So Buddy Taylor, he was just sitting in the room across from us. Oh, that's him. Yep, that's Taylor. He's building a, I think it's Hydra's deck. Hydra's. X mana cost. He likes green. It's a good starting point. X equals zero Hydra? No. Bad idea, Taylor. He's looking to play Everflowing Chalice. Uh Uh-oh. And you know what I did? You know what I told him? Did you hit him? Yep. 
Okay. With I hit him with a cut it bomb. Oh, the, don't play that. I thought you were gonna hit him with like a, a brick. No, I was gonna. I didn't have sort one. Sort of. You get like a deck box and just stuff it as tight and f- packed full as you can of just ever flowing chalices. Put it in a big soccer sock and swing it around like David's trying to hit Goliath with a slingshot. Just huck it right at his head. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, ever flowing chalice is not that good. I seen an ever flowing chalice last night at EDH and M. X equals four. So he, or sorry, multi kicked four times. So he paid eight. So he paid eight. And then the next turn, he had a dragon that fire breathes his whole team and he just 40 a guy. That's pretty good. Confirmation bias? Yes, I will admit. The, the dude that got 40 had his Pramacon destroyed and it was very bad timing for him. <laughs> 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 Immediately after that, Buddy to my left goes, hmm, so you don't kill me next turn. I'll 50 you with ether flux. put myself to five. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who won that game? You did. Yep, bonus round, price of progress. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yep. The moral of the story is don't play Everflowing Chalice. Okay, the one drop slot, of course, it's always Sol Ring unless we're mono green. So we're going to look at the top three slots. Okay. Swords to Plowshares. Yep. Yes, we are playing that. Skull Clamp. No. Not playing it. No. So we got one Milk List match. So let's go to two drops. Orzov Signet. Yes. Yes, we are playing that. Unfortunately, we need the ramp. Anguished on making it. Three. No. I should be playing that instead of Utter End. Nah, Milk List, dude. Okay, Milk you, List. You should right, probably right, be playing right. a removal oh, spell shit. to put something in your graveyard. Four drop. Utter End. Oh. <laughs> so that's two, three Milk List matches. Get wrecked. Five drop. Malakir Blood Witch. That's, no. a, that's a Mardu vampire thing, right? Yeah. Patron of the Vein, same thing. Same thing. Butcher of Malachir, all vampires. Nope. Avacyn Angel of Hope. Nope. At eight. Blasphemous Act at nine. No. That'd be a good one, but Milk List. Dread Cacodemon at 10. Nope. That's a weird one. That's a Kalia thing. Yep. Ulamog at 11. Nope. It the Betrays at 12. Nope. Emmercool 2 at no. 13. Nope. Your boy. 16 drop Draco. Who? Who's playing that? I want to get a t-shirt. 16 drop Draco. Who's playing that? Somebody in Mardu? Why? I... What for? What? Why? At the time this milk list was was produced, I'll thank you, Don Miner from EDHREC.com, there is one Mardu list that plays a Draco. And it's probably like just a, a list of every single creature that could get played in Mardu colors, so somebody just has a list at their disposal. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, oh, yeah, I guess Draco could go in there. Oh, that sucks. Anyways, that's the milk list. There's three milk list matches. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. That's fairly standard, and most of them were like the best removal at the slot that they're at, right? Yeah, or and I don't think you can fault like... somebody unless unless you're like trying to find super cool removal spells, right? Yeah, which which we're gonna do for the rest of the arc. Let's 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 put oh, that. Yeah, in. okay. We're, we're gonna okay. try and do that for the rest of the arc. Oh oh, one up you. Okay. When our listeners send us deck lists in, ooh, send us deck lists that include weird removal. Or removal that you have to, like, kind of is modal but isn't. You know what I mean? Like, you can use it as removal, but it's also this. Or it's not intended to be removal, but it also is. I was thinking the other day about, like, is the speed of a card more important than the flexibility of a card? Ooh. Like, if you had a, uh, let's just say, for example, green one, destroy target artifact. Whatever. Whatever that card is. Like, naturalized. And it's an instant. Yes. Would a sorcery speed version of that that destroys an artifact or an enchantment be a better card at the same cost? Maybe not better, but like, would you rather, which would you rather play in a more casual circumstance, right? Yeah, that's a very hard question to frame or theorize because you look at naturalized versus nature's claim. They're both instants. One costs one mana, but you gain three life. One costs two mana, you don't gain three life. Like, how much do you value the one mana? Not for speed, but for just leaving mana up on turn 10 when you're really going to need it. Yeah. So you're not usually going to crack a naturalize on turn two or a nature's claim on turn one. So it doesn't matter. For mana rocks, it does. That's why soul rings better than like Urgolem's eye or Sisse's ring. Yeah. But uh, for removal, you're not always casting it like on curve. Yeah, sometimes. That's an just, interesting question. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like I want because I really like flexibility in my cards. I like cards that could do more than one thing, mm-hmm. and I'll I'll sometimes pay a premium or 
play a card that's a little slower just to do that because sometimes I want to I don't want to pack a removal for this and this and this when I can just play this one. And yeah, I'm playing less removal. That's like why Austerior com Austere Command is good yeah. at six mana because you can kind of just pick and choose what you want, right? Yeah, like maybe I've got a bunch of artifacts and I want to keep them. And the and uh, I will. the only th yeah exactly the only thing that you got to like build around is you got to make sure that your your deck is physically or, or um, feasibly capable of casting a six drop to destroy all creatures instead of a four drop. Yeah. So you might have a little bit more controly cards or uh, creature smaller creatures with ETB abilities that you don't care about chump blocking with. Yeah. So you can kind of survive without taking hits until turn six or seven. And yeah, maybe we'll do that in a upcoming deck in this arc. That yeah, could be a thing. Oh, oh baby. There might be a white one. We don't know. Okay. Hard to say. That that is that is something that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> oh yeah, the white attacky deck. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Oh you you wait. I'm gonna blow your mind. Unless somebody sends in a better list than the one I'm thinking of right now. Okay, I like Ch that. Challenge challenge thrown to you, CCO Nation. If you think you can build a funnier deck than I can for white attacky, do it. White attacky. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I want to I see it. Show me up. Sweet. So we're talking about white attacky, lovable reject commanders, whatever we want to call them. Sure. Sort of lovable losers, but we've already done that. Yeah, we already did that one. Why is Teriel a lovable loser? She was the least built one of the least built out of Commander 2011, right above Bassandra Battle Seraph, which is just the Boros attack -y. It's the Boros attack deck. Every one of us who's listening to this show either has built or knows somebody who has built that deck. Yeah, and they've done it without Bassandra. Yeah, because it's so, just better I mean, options. Yeah, whatever. So we built Tariel. There's 264 lists on EDH Rec of Tariel, and she is the eighth most popular Mardu commander. And the ones below her are like weird partner combinations, Oros the Avenger, and two cards that are like brand spanking new. Yeah, they just, just came out. Yeah, haven't had time to get more decks yeah. in Tariel. <laughs> new Kalia and the Knight Commander. Sir Gwyn. Yeah. Right? So average CMC of this deck. 3.32. That's right where you want to be for a casual game. Yeah, and despite having all those big drops that we want to reanimate, we've got some really efficient removal that really helps the, the, the package come together, right? You could sprinkle in those one-drop instant speed things wherever you kind of have the mana, right? Like yeah. we were just talking about. Uniqueness rating and tutors. We're kind of getting hurt here, though. Uh-oh. Yeah, so we cut the stone forge, but we've got... And we, we cut the sun forger, too. But we've got a Buried Alive and a Rune Scar Demon for two tutors. Oof. And we only have 31 cards in our list that are different than any of the stock recommendations on EDH Rec. Dang. Yeah, so our spiciness is only 40.1. Ooh. What the hell? That is not, that is not, well, it makes sense because to build Tariel, you can't, well, we'll just put different fatties in our graveyard that we're going to get out. Because you don't get your own fatties, you get somebody else's. You're entirely reliant on your opponents to play your win conditions for you. Yeah, so we we see in the Tariel deck, we see reanimation effects, we see Sepulchral Primordial, we see all of the mana rocks that we have to run because we don't have access to 200 different dorks like Green does to mix it up. So we kind of lost it a little bit there. Of course, Runescar Demon is a way to find a win con or just to make the game interesting. And buried alive just furthers our plan, but we could cut it. You could cut both of them if you really wanted to. It's yeah. If we did, we'd go up to fifty. We'd pass the fifty there test if we cut either one of them because we're allowed one tutor in our deck. Yeah, I mean, that's a so CCO rule. Sometimes you just have to win the game, and if you have to tutor for a win condition at that point, let's just do that. Sometimes you're locked down, or you, the, sometimes the game just has to goddamn end. That's real life. Yeah, like. Let's be honest, we all love EDH, we all love playing EDH, but let's play more than one game if we can. Yeah, I played two games at FNM last night. It yeah, was great. You were so, isn't that great? I played four last time I was there. Wow. Right? Like, playing lots of games is lots of fun. And I played four real games, except for that Cranko one. That was a blowout, but... You can still count it. Yeah, I'm still, I'm <laughs> still, still going to count, count it. It's still a game, yeah, yeah. So that almost sounds like a final thought of the day. How about you give us one last rundown? Uh, qu quickly, I'll, I'll just throw in, we've got merch... The, the t-shirts, there's going to be a link to send us the details that you want. There are new CCO sticks, commandercookout.com slash store. New patron signups, we've got Halloween-themed altars or tokens. And CCO stickers, of course. It is sort of the month of Eldraine content on YouTube. 
And of course, you can check out all of our other social media coordinates that Brando will give you right now. Yep, you can check us out at CCO Podcast, CCO Brando, Twitter, tappedout.net. You can find us anywhere better podcasts are found. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're everywhere you want to find us. You can find a complete list of everywhere, either in the show notes down below or at commandercookout.com. Since it is a new arc, that means we do have a new deck giveaway coming up. We're just hammering out, hammering out some of the details, figuring out what we're going to have sent off to you. We're going to have that and details on how you can win it, and you will win it. We're going to do a tacky white next week, so if you're on our Discord and you're a patron of that level, get your lists in now. If everybody else, send it to commandercookout at gmail.com. We'll take a look at them there, and we're going to be back with you then for another episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Ooh.